Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Zach, otherwise known as Pulpy Syntax, and today it's been a little bit exhausting. <laughs> I am uh, I am moving things around in my home to make it more suitable for vlogging next month and I've just sat down and enjoyed perhaps a little too much uh, chicken catch story, so I'm really rather full and could use a bit of a nap right now. Now, the plan was <laughs> To, um, to do a little reaction to Miss Chantal Marie, Miss Foodie Beauty's Shrimp Fettuccine Alfredo and Garlic Bread Creepy Collab Mukbang. But um, in the last hour or so, uh, Amber surprisingly updated. And then I was like, oh, that's exciting. I'll go check that out and maybe I'll do a react to that. What we're going to do today is a double feature. So I'm going to show Anne Boleyn video. I will not interrupt her while her points are made and then I'll have a little bit of a discussion after that uh, and then we'll move into the mukbang. <sighs> so with all of that being said, I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend um, and let's get into the video. Now for Amber, I have sped this up 1.5 times speed so it might be a little quick but uh, it won't have a lot of me in it. So here we go. So honestly, this is the last video that I would want to make, especially around the holidays, but I have to make it. And this is not for myself. This is for the people around me that I love, such as Becky and her family. I don't care what you guys think of me. And 90, I want to say 95% of the time, I don't care. I don't care about the rumors. I don't care about what people say about me. I just don't. So many things are always being spread about me. A lot of it is not true. And obviously there has been portions that have been true, but that doesn't mean I'm going to come on here and clarify it, justify it, talk about it. Nothing like that. So that's not what this is about at all. You guys can continue to think what you want about me, have your feelings about it, do whatever you have to do. But if you want to cancel me, because this is cancel culture, over something that has happened over a year ago within private lives, over something that you guys have no idea what you are talking about, because not every family is going to be perfect. There will be problems. And I will not, will not sit here and talk about those problems with you guys because I will not disrespect Becky. I will not disrespect her sisters. And I am most definitely 100% not going to disrespect Becky's mother who is no longer here with us. The fact that I have to sit in my bathroom and film this while Becky's in the other room feeling like absolute garbage because people are constantly messaging her and harassing her and saying things and sending screenshots and saying things like, why are you with Anne Boleyn? You have such a cold heart too. I can't believe you do this to your mother. You guys have no idea what you're talking about. So the person who is giving all this information is anonymous to you guys, but not to me and not to Becky and not to her family. We know this woman's name. We have her home address. We have her phone number. We have screenshots of her being a psychotic stalker. She is drama filled. She is crazy all within herself. This woman has caused a lot of drama within Becky's family. And now she's doing it again for the holiday season, just so people have something to hate me about yet again. I am not perfect by any means, but there is a lot of rumors, a lot of speculations, a lot of seeing and hearing one clip of something but not being able to see and hear another one or understand the outside, the full picture story of any anything that's going on right now because you're being fed bits and pieces of things that this woman is sending out to create more drama. Me and Becky's mother, we had our ups and our downs. It is very common for that to happen with in-laws. You guys have no idea what happened on Norma's side and what happened on my side. You guys don't know. You guys don't deserve any sort of explanations because this is a personal thing that happened in the past. Norma and I had problems at one point, but it's not this big, grand, horrible thing that is being created. We both loved each other very much. Her passing hurt me a lot. This is about Becky's family. You guys can call me any name you want. Harass me, harass me, harass me. I really don't care. As long as you're not doing it to Becky or her family because they do not deserve it right now. It would be so simple and so easy to share everything as a whole, but it's not your guys' business. I don't have to apologize to you guys. What you guys are seeing and learning are little tiny little things that happened inside of something bigger. And this is new for you guys. As for us, this is old news. This is stuff that's already been talked about and worked on. And this is behind all of us now being put at the front and center of everything during the first holidays without Becky's mother here. Becky doesn't have her mother here. Her sisters are going through it. Becky's going through it. I'm going through it. I miss Norma. We're all going through it together. Missing a loved one during the holiday season is very hard, especially because Becky's family is so family oriented. They're, they revolve around each other and it's a beautiful thing to see because I didn't grow up with that. Now there's a woman out there who is a narcissist trying to create drama, but I don't think you guys realize that. I understand that I'm hated online and I am only one person, but I am within a family. 
Becky's part of my family. I'm part of her family. And what this woman is doing is not only hurting and upsetting me, but it's hurting and upsetting Becky and her sisters. Like think for three seconds of how insane it is that this woman is sharing personal things that was told to her by a woman who is no longer here with us anymore over a year later. What? I'm just very, very grateful that after that family drama happened, everything was so much more peaceful. And it just sucks that you guys are seeing these little tiny things, assuming that is how our whole relationship was when it wasn't at all in the slightest. I'm trying my very hardest to be as strong as I can for Becky because this is giving her really bad anxiety. It's making her stomach hurt. And she just doesn't need this right now. You guys can cancel me all you want for your entertainment, but I'm not just some character on YouTube. This is like my real life. I just don't think that this is appropriate at all. Like it would be different if this was happening currently. And like, you guys just have to think like this happened over a year ago and this was private information that this person is giving out. And it's not even the full information at all. And since then, everything has completely changed. Even way before Norma passed away, things were so much different. Let Becky's family mourn in peace. This is just completely disrespectful. Right. So there's a little bit to unpack there. Now, when the leaked voicemails that I did not feature uh, on this channel, but we all knew where to look, were initially leaked, I made the argument that it was sticky, right? Primarily in that we didn't have the approval of the individuals who were speaking to actually have them published, one of whom has unfortunately passed away, so that's problematic. We didn't know who the individual was who was releasing them, or at least, you know, the majority of us didn't. There's all a bit of a sticky tangled uh, mess. In this video, Amber makes a lot of good points, perhaps not as eloquently said um, as they could be, but she definitely makes some, some valid points here, right? The things that are happening outside of her YouTube are not within her control, not produced content for her her YouTube. Um, is she free of criticism because they are outside of her YouTube that she controls? No, unfortunately. The reality is, and as the age old saying goes, you said what you said. Um, so. That, it's unfortunate there there are recordings of the the conversation. Um, and should they be made public? Absolutely not, in my opinion. Absolutely not. Um, this individual didn't have, you know, any leg to stand on in terms of morality when that happened. And it it's all just... It's all just a big bag of mess, really. The main takeaway that I want to say on this video is that if if you're a person out there who feels as if they need to tell Becky how bad it is that she's with Amber, um, my recommendation would just be to not. Just don't do that. Especially in this regard, because it's clear that the family is going through... And I'm, not, I'm taking Amber out of the equation here. I'm talking specifically about what she was focusing on, which was Becky and um, her sisters. They are grieving, they are going through a, a period of mourning um, and loss, and so having a very loud <laughs> fan base kind of connected to that must be really hard to deal with. Now, um, there was one point in there that I kind of glazed over um, but thinking about it more, I do, I do kind of want to talk about it. I don't really want there to be a lot of conversation about this video. The only reason why I'm realistically putting it up here is because I think, um, for those who don't watch Amber through her channel, it is fair, I guess, is a good way for me to, to put it. Uh, it is fair for her to get her and Becky's perception on the matter out there into the world. Amber may be right in saying that we as the audience don't deserve, and perhaps that's a poor choice of words, but we don't deserve to know what's going on in the background, and that's fine. But to say that we as the audience don't deserve to know or sh shouldn't need to know, I think is the better way of saying it. But then following it up with screenshots of texts between you and Norma, who is the deceased individual in this case, Again, we're back into sticky territory, right? I get it, Amber's using these text messages and this 
communication as a form of, um, I don't want to say defense, but a form of evidence um, to say, no, look, all families are kind of like this. We have our spats and then we, we, you know, kiss and make up. And I get that. Like, <laughs> it's families. We, we definitely do that. It is really unfortunate timing that this happened around the holiday when all of this was going on. I think it's quite um, mature of Amber to address it in this way. Again, just some of the wording seemed a little bit pointed. I'm not going to begrudge anyone that because this is quite a sticky uh, situation. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's all I have to say on the matter. Like I said, I don't, I don't expect there to be a lot of conversation on this one. There were some little amberisms in there, for sure, in terms of kind of shifting the focus, shifting the focus off of her onto, um, onto Becky and the family. Even though she's saying, "Well, don't don't come for them, come for me." It, I don't know. It just Mixed messages, right? Mi mixed signals. Um, anyway, that's all on that video. And now we're going to jump over to hopefully something a little bit more lighthearted uh, with a mukbang. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> right, well, we're over to Chantel now. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep this on 1.5 speed only because it's a 26-minute mukbang and I guarantee by the 10-minute mark I want it to be over. So <laughs> let's get to... Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, foodie beauty. Hello. Hey, Sammy. Oh, you're fat, fit, and fun. Yes. Hey, kitty. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you? How are you? Well, Hi. well enough. People miss you. Yes. Trying to get my energy back after that video. Coming soon. <laughs> the team of story part two. Yes. Yes. For any new subscribers who haven't checked out um, my reaction to the story time part one card. Um, we decided to take Chantel's story and just flesh it out a little bit, just to just kind of add some, some character details and some quirks, including names. Uh, and with part two on its way, I can't wait because it means that we get to flesh out the story even more. And I really look forward to that. Okay. You're having supper? Okay, guys. Oh, it's small. <laughs> small? That looks pretty big. It's like a, that's a meal size, right? Oh, you can barely even look at food. It's so full. <laughs> oh no, it's not bad. Chicken cacciatore. Just, just great. All right, so you voted for today's creepy pasta. You wanted the shrimp. I personally was craving the tomatoes. Uh... I did see this poll go up on her community tab. Um, and it is, I don't know how petty I'm starting to sound with some of this um, criticism. People like to call me out about it. Um, nitpick was the term. I'm a nitpicker. Anyway, I don't know how to feel about people voting on the food that a content creator eats. I don't know how to feel about it. It kind of feels a little bit weird. I don't know. It's not like there was an option like a, a pizza or for like celery sticks. Like that's, that, that would, might be a bit more problematic, but I, I don't know. I don't know how much audience engagement uh, a creator needs in terms of what they're going to be mukbanging that day. Yeah, you mukbang. Now that I'm looking at this, it looks pretty good. So I ordered from Eastside Mario's, which is your United States, um, either Fazoli's or yes. And I did briefly look up Mr. Eats East. Sorry, Mr. East Side uh, Mario's menu, and access is denied in my part of the world. So thanks, mate. Or, um, so I don't know how I don't so, know the calorie count on this. I got the meal. I really don't have the energy to look at, Salad, look at it. Bun, a bread. So and I say that because I've just spent an hour skating. <laughs> so please forgive me. I don't know if it's like that at Olive Garden, but every meal at Eastside Mary was always comes with complimentary salad and a garlic loaf, That's which a is huge piece of bread. Favorite. Their dressing is good. <laughs> okay, so we'll start. We'll start on this. Um, for my American or Canadian uh, viewers, please let me know if this is a meal designed for one person or two, because my critical and nitpicky eyes might say that this is a family meal, or at least a meal designed for two. There are two sources even, so 
and that salad looked pretty big. I feel like this is designed for two people to share. But I don't know, so I'll say allegedly. Or in my opinion, rather, because this is an opinion. Okay, it's a drink. Water. So, I'm all right, let's do this, guys. Up. Let's open this up. Mmm. Mm. So this has shrimp. Um, let's think of, like, tomatoes and onions or something. And, uh... Our food reviewer out here. It's got shrimp and tomatoes and onions and something. I don't know. Yeah, green onions. Um, and Alfredo sauce. It looks really good, actually. And the salad. I, I can't really see too much of it because it's pretty blown out on my end, but um, I don't know how, I, I don't think it looks great. It's just, Which just I'm actually, the bread looks nice. Right now, so let's get rid of those onions. Like, that salad looks dry as heck. <laughs> that does not look like healthy lettuce. What's going on here? And let's put okay. the croutons. Doesn't this look good, this salad? Not really. It looks yellow. Yikes! Right. He stole the shaky cheese. Shaky cheese, shaky cheese. This is uh, Eastside Mario's garden salad, famous dressing, which is very good. It's just like a vin Italian vinaigrette, kind of. It's Reverse like a good vinaigrette. It tastes like the Italian. Um, Olive Garden dressing, kind of. Enjoy your. Well, that kind. Of. Yep. All right. All right, guys. So, let's begin. Um, what I'm going to do is this is a collab video. Let us start at the very good beginning. It's a very good place to start. Damn. <laughs> so I'm, gonna that. I'm gonna eat a bit, and then I'm gonna get to the creepy stuff. Okay. Mm. What? I'm. Th I don't do this to be cruel. I do this only with a critical eye. There is a little something on her cheek. That's all. Yum. Get a little bite. Boob tons. Like croutons. That's actually a little funny. <laughs> Beep, I can be a child as well. <laughs> mm. We're going to eat. Okay. A little bit. An olive. And pepperoni. Comment down below. What's the, uh, what's the better olive? Um... <clears throat> After I eat a bit, I'm gonna pause. Do the creepy pasta, which is short. Okay. Now, I'm collabing. I was supposed to collab in October. Oh yeah, she put collab in the Bay title, Nation, right? Formerly known as Bitchin' and Eaton. B A E. They were YouTube friends of mine. Okay. Way back when I even started YouTube. Are they worth checking out? I don't. I don't know. Peter Mon shouted them out. I don't know who that is, so sorry guys. Um, it just like slipped my mind. Because we planned it so far in advance and I just have a lot on my mind. So I felt terrible. I'm like, I am going to do this. I haven't done collabs in a while. Like, virtual distance collabs. I haven't done an in-person collab ever. Oh. Um, it's a virtual col collab. Like, would it just be a Zoom call? Do I need to do this? <laughs> Guys, let me know if anyone's a fellow creator and wants to wants to tag team a mukbang with me. <laughs> so they did. They wanted to collab with me. They love the creepy pasta series, so they did one. They made a delicious pasta meal video, and it's called Alice in Hell. Is the story they they read off. So I'm gonna read off a story. It's actually that's a cool background. Short. Um, it's just a short creepy pasta, honestly. Like a motorcyclist. Oh. <sighs> Left. It's a super creepy story. Like. <laughs> Shaky cheese. No joke. Even though it's short. There are some like two sentence horror stories out there that are creepy, you know? Are they there? So, I mean, it just, it's not always about the length of the story. It's like fresh. Oh, I thought they're bad. And butter. Butter. Delicious. Bread or butter. Classic. Olive, olive, my life. I 
think in December I'm making a bread and butter pudding. Get excited for that. I'm excited for that. <laughs> to be with you. Um, so yeah, I'll leave Bay's video link in the description so you can watch that one after this one. Or maybe I will. Come back and watch mine. Maybe, I don't Up know. Up to you. <laughs> mm. bite. No, thank you. I'm full up. Beauty bite of the shrimp. <laughs> I know I look a hot mess. I have coming... We can talk about the the look if you want. I don't. I I said it three years ago, and I'll say it again. I don't love gray as a backdrop to florals. That's just me. Um, that's it. The makeup looks pretty pretty standard for Chantel, and yeah, I don't like the top. I do like the kind of the lace bib going on. I don't quite understand why it then goes into a like back into the material on the collar. That, that's weird, right? Like, looking at that, that seems a little strange. Like, wouldn't you just continue the lace from from the bust all the way up? It's probably a structural thing. I know, it just seems kind of lazy. Fashion. <laughs> Some more clamps for my green screen. You still haven't got those. Mm. Well, that's good. So, after Alfredo sits for a little bit, it kind of gets harder. Yep. I um coagulation. I'll be able to set up the green screen for certain videos. So yeah. Beauty bite. Oh my god. There's like fresh garlic and tomatoes in the Alfredo. That really make it honestly. Is there tomato in that? Because I can't that. see. I can't see a lick of color. It's just. It's, it's mm -hmm. just creamy. I mean, eh, I'm sure it's. That's good, Sam. No. Why? <sighs> now, this may be nitpicky. Um, just use the fork, yeah. Like you have, you're using the fork for the pasta. So why have why pick up the shrimp by the tail and. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Even though chain restaurant foods, you know, people I'm... dog them a lot. I crave them once in a while. Well, you know what I mean? Like, hey, Sam. The cats are wheezing. Because <laughs> I'm filming, so they need attention. 24 7. Hmm. Spot's still there, that's embarrassing. Need a bit more here. So I found some creepy pastas that are short, but creepy. I think she Quite has a... Is it petty if I call it out for seeing it? I, I don't think so. I'm not, I don't mean this in any rudeness or malice, Chantel, but you have a spot on your cheek and a spot on your forehead, and that's all. So, I get it, pasta can be messy. Yum. This is really good. I've never had the, this pasta from there. Why? <laughs> Shrimp, fettuccine Alfredo, or something like that. <laughs> I think the other thing that kind of bums me out about this, <laughs> it's like I'm sliding into a mild depression here. Um, the other thing that bums me out about this is that you could you could very easily put this on a plate, set this up with a knife and fork that isn't plastic, maybe. You know, like, you could just set this like a, a dinner instead of just out of plastic. It's a very mild, a mild concern of mine, but it's just, you know, it could just look nicer, is what I'm trying to say. Good. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. So. 
So just that. I'm a lot of crouton. It's that aggressive slapping of the chops, as my grandmother would say. It's just. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. We're meant to be doing a creepy pasta. Get cozy. I am. We're gonna read a creep short creepy pasta called "I Sat on the Bus." Okay. Creepy looking bus. Are you? You could have just popped that in. That would it would have taken all of three seconds to split, split your clip, pop in an image. Okay, that's fine. I We're low energy bus. today, guys. The birds are chirping. Put your earphones in, turn off the lights, lay back and just listen. No, I like my setup thing. Some people are the type who can't get into a story just listening to someone else telling it. So <clears throat> I discovered that I can whenever my grade four teacher, well, my mom used to read to me every day. I had so many Berenstain Bears uh, books and um, little critters and... Let me know guys, is it Berenstain or Berenstain? Berenstain. Hmm. So many books. <laughs> Babar. Um, yep. That's King Baba. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Seuss. But my grade four teacher read Old Yeller to us, the whole novel, and it was sad. But I, I still remember the Baba animated cartoon. That was like around my my demographic when I was a kid. Good time. Loved listening to the story tell. So if you like that, I'll try to do my best. <laughs> so it's called I Sat on the Bus. Mm -hmm. I Sat on the Bus. On my way to school. Ooh. Listening to music filter, and paying little to no attention to the other students. Candle. At one of the stops, my mind slipped okay. back to reality. I looked towards the small house. Tommy's house, I thought. A hand slipped through the drapes of the window and waved the bus driver to move on. Hey, he's sick, I thought, paying no large amount of attention to the situation. The day flew by. I watched the local news channel after school, and what I heard paralyzed me. Tommy's entire family was murdered that day by an unknown suspect. After hearing this news, I moved back up to my room and quietly fell asleep. The next day, I sat on the bus. We drove past Tommy's house, and the bus driver, unaware of Tommy's family's fate, stopped at his home. As I was about to get up and explain to her what had happened, something caught my eye. A pale hand slipped through the drapes of the window and waved for the bus driver to move on. I sat on the bus, terrified. <clears throat> so, um... I guess I that was it. Isaac Cook, it says, the source of the creepypasta. Okay. Anyway. That was great. Um, I may have added something in post <laughs> to make that a little bit more engaging. Just some music or something. You know, we'll see. Who knows? Good. I don't know. It was short, but still I'm creepy, past you know Zach. I mean? I'm Future Zach or no. He'll sort it out. He's a good guy. Um... There's more. I might do another one. It's a very short. <laughs> so that was it. That's the creepy pasta we're getting with this box of pasta. All right. It's very messy. Yeah, it is. Hi, Pete. <clears throat> do you have band aids, or am I, are we gonna have to go to the pharmacy? Oh, well, you don't have to check now, but because if not, we might have. Oh, is Pete's okay? Band aids are just one of those things you. They're so handy to have. I mean. True. I nicked half of the wart off. It just like <laughs> ow. I know it's gross. Ow, 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 ow. Like something. Fun story about warts while we're eating. Um, I I used to have like quite large planter warts on the ends of my thumbs. Um, and oh god, they would hurt any time I'd take skin off. Um they eventually went away. But yeah, I just remember like cutting at them with scissors when I was a kid instead of oh yeah, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Anyway, back to dinner. I'm gonna hit it. I don't know. I got my hand, so it's like in an awkward, you know. <clears throat> if you're checking there for band-aids, we don't have any. Uh, where's my empty thing in the Oh! Can you see Sam there? Yep. I'm telling creepy pastas. While eating pasta. It's a great idea. Yeah, that creepy pasta was creepy. <laughs> because. Was it? Just a good bow story, you know? <laughs> and sad. That was a rainbow lorikeet. I like, almost feel, even though you can't see it, 
the forlorn nature of the pale hand at the end waving the bus like you'll never need to come here again you know like we've passed on and i don't know it was well written for a short story mm. okay oh man this pasta is messy though. more cheese I can't begrudge, I can't begrudge more cheese. Even that craft, shaky, parmesan. <laughs> I can't begrudge it, because, like, cheese is the best. It is the best. Mm. This container looks small, but there's, like, a lot of pasta in it. <laughs> yeah. Shrimp. I, I might question whether or not it's enough for two. <laughs> like... I kind of feel like it is. Sugar. I know somebody who hates garlic. I don't know. Isn't though. that weird? <laughs> no. Unless you can't tolerate it or something. Let me know if you like garlic or not. Hi, Sam. Let me know if you like garlic or not. I love garlic, and I do apologize to anyone out there who hasn't. Is it Allison? Allison? Al it, it's a Y, not an I. Al Allison, I think. Um, allergy, right? That's that's like onion and garlic and then those family of vegetables i know i'm busy shallots echelots spring me? onions basically all the same thing <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea how these mukbangers slurp their their fettuccine and noodle i mean i can't do it i can't do it <sighs> All right. I mean, salad with my hand. It's like not good. It's like one of those bags of crappy shredded lettuce. She has a fork. Salad mixes. Boring. <laughs> no flavor. You know. <clears throat> but then I find romaine lettuce. Like I buy the romaine hearts because I find the greener leaf very bitter. Oh yeah, like absolutely. I buy romaine hearts um, when I make. Sunshine bao and things like that. Uh, they're delicious. They've got just the right amount of crispness and flavor and they're small enough not to be like a whole lettuce leaf kind of wrapping. Um, and yeah, they're great. Do you know what I mean? Rarely do I know what you mean, Chantel, I unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know I use a lot of Parmesan cheese. <laughs> like every inch has to be coated. <clears throat> this is so good. So, just don't hi Sam. Have a lot of words. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Go check out Bay's video, and thank you, Bay, for being patient with me. I felt terrible. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll check them out and see see what the goal is. Still. So. <sighs> yummy, yum. Do you guys like fettuccine or linguine better? More. I... I... I find like um, gonna have to say fettuccine. Just easier. Linguine. The noodles are noodles are slippery. Like they're shaped in a rounded way where like I don't know. It's like it's harder for sauce to adhere to it. I don't know if it's just me, but <laughs> adhere. That was adhere. Too. That's how I feel. That's how I think. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm. Just a lot of face wiping going on. Every time I hear that, it makes me... Uh, even though I disabled my profile. I signed up for Tinder very briefly. And... Uh, Get it. Had some interesting encounters. Did you? Let me know if you guys want to hear about them. Ooh. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, for sure, I could get a video worth that's for sure. 
I don't think I want to hear about them. No. That's I a no for me. Couple lines of conversation and then unmatch. Yeah, I mean you gotta Very be frequently. you gotta be engaging and witty yeah, and quick. Time, you know, interesting. It's the lettuce is not a good quality quality. Make puns. <sighs> My pun game's pretty uh, strong. Cold Evian water? <laughs> spring water. I like drinking spring water. I like the flavor, but also like um, it has like important minerals in there, like natural electrolytes in spring water. So, does it? Uh, oh, electrolytes had something to do with salt. I guess that's a mineral coming from spring water. Sure, I guess. Maybe, I mean, I'm all for spring water over Gatorade. Excuse me. You are excused. I think that was just the right amount of pasta. It's like a container's worth individual size and individual yeah <laughs> anyway of course you can fill up on the bread if you don't think the pasta is enough <laughs> like in this restaurant you can get unlimited but in when you order obviously you can which doesn't make sense you should just be able to say give me this many loaves well no i guess then that way you would hoard it you know so. yeah and as uh, a past service worker the idea of complimentary anything is to keep your butt in the seat and keep drinking <laughs> that's the that's the plan right it's like 50 cent wings like yeah 50 cent wings are great because you're going to come in and spend nine dollars on a beer like that's you you it's the way it works anyway it makes sense giving you one free oh we order from like red lobster they give you like a few biscuits free those are the best Okay, guys. Thinking about another meal. I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was a short. That was like a shorter than I thought. Creepy pasta. It was like really short. It took me like what two minutes and one minute to read it. <laughs> so. Did you read it first. Let me know if you like this or if you want me to talk like about something like um if you like this kind once in a while because there's a lot of short ones. Maybe you can read two or three in a video. I don't know. What would I want out of Creepy Pasta 2.0? Um. I'd like some costuming, some dramatic lighting. We got a good good effect there. I think I think that should be continued. Um, perhaps some voice modulation. That would be interesting. Or she doesn't even need to do that in post. She can just try and put on voices. Like that. That'd be fun. Like that'd be funny. That'd be hilarious. Uh, and maybe maybe a pasta that is just a little less messy. That's just my my personal request. Um, yeah, I think that's I think just a nicer setup. Plates, cutlery, maybe a nice little glass, a wine glass. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know, but we'll see. But yeah. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching this video, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, bye. Okay. Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> It is, it is quite uh, sometimes unfortunate that I can sit through a mukbang and not find a redeeming quality about it. It just, that one was not for me. I, the food didn't look particularly good. The setup wasn't particularly good. The story that was going along with the, the pasta element of the creepiness wasn't very mem memorable and took all of two minutes. Um, yeah, and I don't know whether or not it was the amberness at the start of the video that kind of played uh played an element in kind of my subdued nature uh in in that reaction but that just yeah just wasn't it just wasn't it for me <laughs> it wasn't it i'm looking forward to do my doing rather my first uh my first live on the channel in in a little bit of time so so that'll be fun i hope to catch catch you all there uh but anyway, thank you all so much for your comments, eyeballs, and opinions. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.